You said I'll never hurt you again. Well, I'm done believing you. And I've got all the voice memos to prove exactly why I'm through. The video I made because I couldn't see straight enough to type and could barely talk any better with a concussed head and little to no recollection less than five minutes after. Did you really expect me to just give you another chance to fuck me over? Did you really think I'd just lie down and roll over? Let you walk all over me, control me, oh mighty puppeteer, you're so good at stacking the odds to your advantage. Play the victim and romance all the others with your sweet talk and promises of goodwill. I'm irrational and you just mean well. Do me a favor and favor the side of my head a little more next time because the next black eye might just be the last you ever see of me. That $70 bus ticket to Philly has been screaming my name lately and it's unsurprisingly comforting. And maybe she can tell me I'm letting you win again, running away from the problem, but if you can learn to live as if I'm dead, I think you'll more than manage. I was 12 when I started stashing cash in a mug, my little running away fund, and how many nights I'd daydream about exactly where I'd go so I wouldn't get caught. But now I have a debit card and eventually I'll have a car, and I won't have to go further than the garage to run from your mindfuck games. Playing cat and mouse isn't so fun when the mouse is trapped and inconveniently also a masochist, but I'm learning that suffering and staying is not worth trying to teach a lesson. The standoff is over, weapon back in its holster, shoot me in the back as I walk away if you really feel like it'll help you feel better. That's the beauty of Kevlar and selective thick skin. How pathetic it is to be reduced to wishing that someone could really understand the synergistic effect of body and brain when both are close to falling apart. I'm tumbling down the rabbit hole with a cannonball chain to each ankle and I'm sorry is not something I can grab onto. Even when they're well-intentioned, they're not tangible. I need the kind of help I can sink my teeth into, latch on and climb out of this, buy a couple candles and some string and light that bitch, and finally cut the fucking cord, so the only thing still dragging me down is all the things my own body keeps me from. All my dreams anymore look like the apocalypse, and every time I imagine life being better, it is largely because I'm imagining a life without you in it.